since KRQE News Channel 13 ran my clip about New Mexico Carlsbad radioactive fallout and call me the C word, I've lost thousands of views on this video and I've been getting threats. When you YouTube New Mexico, you already get kinds of all kinds of conspiracy theories about UFOs and aliens. Just this week, a New Mexico man claimed that two lights came out of the sky and forced him off Interstate 40 near Albuquerque. Now, I don't want no problem, mister. I just want to be able to go down to the corner store sometimes to get some hard rock candy and chummies for my puppy. <laughs> well, at least you never call me a conspiracy theorist. The whip leak has spawned a new wave so of So the winds are going to switch and change and it's going to blow back. Uh, Evaporation is going to liberate it. It's going to get into the water, into all your friends. Don't! Now I'm sure they could have used the worst clip of me, so I'm grateful for that. And conspiracy theorists are posting plenty of videos online claiming the radiation leak near Carlsbad is way worse than the government is letting on. It's going to get into the water, into all your farmland. It's going to be on your children's slides. Don't! <clears throat> but I never started this. The big shots over at KFOR TV Oklahoma City News Channel 4 did. And they showed a dispersal model of radioactive material disguised as bananas and never flat out debunked it. Ooh. From the New Mexico Carlsbad accident heading to Oklahoma and claimed it was equal and to a banana. And even healthy foods aren't 100% healthy. Most people will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas than they ever will from this New Mexico repository site. Now to establish some credibility, I had to go to KRQE site, so I went to Google and found them. I took a quick peek at their Facebook and read their mission statement, because it was everywhere. And then I got a long hot shower. Then it's over to their dot com and I decided to type in a random word like, oh, I don't know, mm, how about Japan? And a couple of stories about the terrible tsunami, but nothing about the three melted reactors. So I typed in Fukushima, and to my dismay, nothing showed up. How was that even possible? The biggest nuclear accident in history doesn't even get a mention. So I went over to their YouTube and continued my search for Fukushima, <laughs> but all I got was tsunami. So I refined my searches. And the only mention was a two-minute video about iodine. It was from five days after 3.11. You might not think that the nuclear emergency going on halfway a world in Japan would have much of an effect here in New Mexico. Think again. Uh, just a constant stream of phone calls about potassium iodide and um, what forms do we have it in. But is there really anything to worry about? This is all part of uh, how people think that they're protecting themselves by going off and getting KI, but in KI being potassium iodide. Um, unfortunately, it's probably not going to do them any good. Why not? Because here in New Mexico, uh, we're not going to get exposed to any radio iodine. Dr. Gil May has researched radioactive respiratory health for four decades in New Mexico. He says this run on iodine is just unnecessary. We need to be able to put risks in perspective, and radiation is just one of the many risks that we suffer um, by living on planet Earth. Jeff Todd, KRQE News 13. Workers at the stores we visited told us they're having trouble even finding suppliers that haven't sold out of iodine supplements. And experts warned that many iodine pills sold online are fake and potentially harmful. So I watched it five times and had a dandelion routine and watched it again. And then it struck me. Why is the scientist giving an interview outside the door? And who is that man with the dark shades and the lab coat on? And why did he say there was no way Fukushima could make it there? Um, unfortunately, it's probably not going to do them any good. Why not? Because here in New Mexico, uh, we're not going to get exposed to any radio iodine. Never took me long to find him. Here was a man with 80 published studies, an incredible achievement, and the winner of the 2000 Distinguished Scientific Achievement Award. To my shock and horror, I was looking at the gates of hells for beagles and puppies. A factory puppy death camp, if you will, spanning almost three decades. In 1974, he put out a paper about americium-241 from the liver and the skeletons of adult baboons. In 1979, he was putting plutonium in the dogs and writing papers on it. In 1981, he was singling in on beagle dogs exposed by inhalation to aerosols of plutonium-238. Of the 46 Bone tumors, 22 originated in the vertebrae, 12 in the humeri, and 6 in the pelvis. 
Dr. Gil May has researched radioactive respiratory health for four decades in New Mexico. In 1984, he was looking at the lungs of hamsters, rats, and dogs. He's a busy, busy beaver. He liked the Syrian hamsters, the fisher rats, and the beagle dogs. And he liked to let them inhale. <laughs> DOE sent a letter today to people of Eddie and Lee County saying again that the radiation that got into the air Valentine's Day was likely at very low levels, no more risky than a chest x ray. Inhale it. And during the first 16 days, most were sacrificed. Gee, I wonder what that means. And there was a slightly greater tumor incident that was calculated for rats and dogs and from hamsters on the basis of the dose. WIP scientists say radiation levels are far below some of those in our everyday lives, like from medical x-rays and natural sources. 1984, now he's singled in on 239 plutonium in the beagles and the effect of the aerosol particle sizes. So he's getting much better. 1987, 239 in dogs. Liking it, liking it a lot. Making some monies. So 1,100 days of radiation doses were calculated for lung, liver, skeleton, kidney, spleen. So he's using this to compare it to human. So you got to get the dog cancer, and then they got to dissect the dog. Other tissues received radiation doses also, but at levels one to three orders of magnitude less than the... Just on and on and on. The first known release of radiation from the underground site on February 14th is very serious, but... They insist that the radiation levels detected in and around the plant in the last 10 days are no riskier than a dental x-ray or an airline One flight. One skeptical member of the audience asked how they could be sure of that since not all the samples have been analyzed. <laughs> so once again, in 1988, he's looking at the lung functions of dogs inhaling radioactive particles. Dr. Gil May has researched radioactive respiratory health for four decades in New Mexico. <laughs> Beagle dogs had signs of restrictive lung disease one to five years after exposure. Inhalation Toxicology Research Institute. Loveless. <laughs> Loveless. A little ironic. Beagle dogs had signs of restrictive lung disease one to five years after exposure of plutonium-239 aerosols. The average onset time of clinical signs of lung injury was three years after exposure. These findings indicate that alpha irradiation of the lungs of man could produce restrictive lung disease at long times after initial exposure. At this point, it's unclear exactly how much radiation has been released. Additional sampling is going on. We have employees uh, sequestered in place. Um, so that uh, we minimize any potential for um, airborne inhalation. Underground operations had already been suspended a week and a half ago after a truck caught fire in the underground facility where radioactive waste is housed. 1988, still focusing on beagles. 1989, you guessed it, beagles. 1989, he moved up to curium isotopes, a major byproduct in the radiated nuclear fuel. 1989, you don't see what kind of dog it is, but you would assume it's going to be Beagle. 1990, <laughs> rats and dogs, keep them going. 1991, he went looking at radon. That makes it good for just model of water. Long-term consequences of 239 exposure in dogs. 1992, young Beagle dogs were exposed by inhalation to aerosols of plutonium-239. So they gave it to them young and then watched them over their lifetime. 1992, distribution and biological effects of inhale in monkeys. Animals died or were sacrificed. Now we know what that word means. 1995, still writing papers on dogs. 1996, using plutonium on the beagle dogs again. Study was conducted to determine the biological effects of inhale 238 over the lifespan of 144 dogs. The lungs and skeletons and livers received the highest alpha particle doses. At its peak, the radiation levels were about a quarter of what you'd get in a chest x-ray. At death, all dogs were autopsied and all organs and lesions were sampled. Death from the radiation occurred up to five years later. Tumors of the lung, skeleton, and liver occurred beginning at about three years after exposure. Bone tumors found in 93 dogs were the most common cause of death. Lung tumors in 46 dogs, liver tumors in 20 dogs. These findings 
In dogs, suggest that similar dose-related biological effects could be expected in humans accidentally exposed to plutonium-238. Now, there are also a lot of reports online saying that Kirtland Air Force Base placed an emergency order for 1,200 radiation suits after the leak, saying that that was the reason. But we called Kirtland today and spoke to a base official who said that's just not true. <laughs> 1998, carcinogenic risks in dogs that inhale, you guessed it, 238 plutonium. 260 lifespan beagle dogs that inhaled 238 for incidence of lungs, bones, and liver tumors were modeled as a function of cumulative radiation dose. The radiation leak was detected about two weeks ago. The Department of Energy says the levels of radiation that escaped the waste isolation pilot plant's underground facility near Carlsbad are relatively small. They say it's about a quarter of what you would get from a chest x ray. 1999. The effects of inhaled insoluble particles of alpha and beta particle emitting radionuclides were compared in beagle dogs. The initial lung burning and retention of each radionuclide was determined by whole body counting of the emissions. 1999, still doing the alpha and beta emitting radionuclides in doggies. In addition, organ retention data was obtained from parallel serial sacrifice studies with the same aerosols. So they had another group of dogs they were given the aerosols and chopping their lungs. They were sacrificed. 2007, still rocking, still rocking. 70 flipped over to doing nose swabs for workers. The results provided empirical support for using nose swab data for early dose assessment. That's important, folks. And he's got quite uh, achievements under his belt. So I wonder how many puppies you got to irradiate to get the 2000 Distinguished Scientific Achievement Award. <laughs> Dr. Raymond Gilmetty. Times no more risky than a chest x-ray. People saying it's much worse than the government is letting on. Whenever you have a disaster of any kind, there's always issues. You always mitigate the disaster and you move forward. And it's a big cover-up. It provides business, jobs, a future. <laughs> Here's News 13's Gabrielle Burkhart with that. Gabby? Dick, there's plenty of talk out there. Some people saying that... You know, I don't think it calls for mass hysteria. That even pretending to be legitimate news outlet is very serious, but are no riskier than a dental x-ray or an airline flight. Whip scientists say radiation levels are far below some of those in our everyday lives, like from medical x-rays and natural sources. We know that's not true are no more risky than a dental x-ray or an airline flight. There. Some people are saying no danger to human health or the environment. There's a potential dose of 1.3 to 4.4 millirems. To give you an idea of what that means, a single chest x-ray will expose a person to 10 millirems. The average person in the U.S. gets exposed to more than 600 millirems every year from naturally occurring radiation. That's what officials are saying. Workers at the site did not test positive for contamination. 13 WIP staff who were working above ground the day of the leak have tested positive for radiation. Okay, Gabby, some of those faux news reports on YouTube and some of the video bloggers also talk about, it shows a big cloud of radiation, supposedly, that is spreading across the country. We will continue to cover the WHIP story as it unfolds, and we'll have the latest online constantly at KRQE. And even healthy foods aren't 100% healthy. Most people will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas than they ever will from this New Mexico repository site. Theorists are posting plenty of videos online claiming the radiation leak near Carlsbad is way worse than the government is letting on.